Hello everybody, sound check, sound check, one, two, three, I should do. Sorry that this didn't turn out to be a live video, but nonetheless, I wanna get you the information still that I did promise tonight. And what I wanted to do was get stuck into right away is how easy it is and how quick it is to actually make the dishwashing tablets. It's not as traumatic as you think and um, time as an excuse you'll see uh, isn't one because it's so quick and easy. Um, but then I actually want to show you some hacks that you can do with these dishwashing tablets other than just the, the standard chuck them in the dishwasher. And um, it wouldn't be me if I didn't actually go into a bit of science and the chemistry and how I came up with this little recipe. Um, we've got some resources thanks to Finnish Powerball. So thank you to the big guys. Um, I've got my West Coast cooler here. Yes, I've gone back to the 80s and that's totally okay. But without further ado, what I'm going to do is show you how bloody easy it is to make from dishwashing tablets. Now what I do is I use three ingredients for mine. Now, um, there are lots of variations to the recipes and by all means, give them a go. Um, but I tried to rip off what was in the Powerball tablet as much as possible and explain the reasons why I use the ingredients that I do. So first of all, you get yourself a bowl and you need three ingredients. Crystal clear, which is sodium percarbonate, washing soda, sodium carbonate, and coconut soap. Now, when this, um, I use coconut soap because it's low in lather, but it's high in cleansing, and it's just been ground up into fine flakes to make it easy to use for these DIY solutions. You could ground up some soap if you really, really wanted to. I hate grating stuff, so that's why I don't. Now, it's quite simple. Um, what I do is the bicarbonate, the majority of the ingredients is going to be the washing soda. So I've actually got half a cup of washing soda going in there. Then the next most thing is the coconut soap flakes, which does our cleaning and is the surfactant. And then, last of all, just a quarter of a cup of the bicarbonate. And that's our oxy bleach, our natural bleach and cleaning agent. Now, I'll give all these a little bit of a mixture, mix together. And uh, look, there can be some raised dust, so be careful when you um, are mixing that you don't breathe that in. Keep it a bit away from you. Now, the next thing you need is just some water. Okay, so now what I usually use is shot glass. Um, to measure it out, or an espresso glass, I should say. Now, basically, I do want to show you a little trick that I have, though, um, to make my dishwashing tablets set a little bit faster and harder, because you can find when you make DIY with water as your mix, as your glue, that it can get a bit crumbly over time. So one thing that I do uh, use, first we'll chuck some water in this little container, I've got a secret ingredient, it's called silicon emulsion. Now this is like a glue <laughs> and it's got so many benefits um, including reducing hard water, keeping your dishwasher and um, metals um, safe from erosion, but it also is a binder. So just the smallest amount I pop in there. And this is made from a mixture of bicarb and sand that's been blast furnaces together. So basically, mix that emulsion together and look, I'll just pour in half at a time, okay? Because what happens is these ingredients absorb the water, so you want to get it mixed throughout and it will go into clumps. So if you really um, use the back of your spoon and mix it out, it'll actually be a lot more wetter than you think it actually is. So in this case, I'm going to add the rest. I've done this a few times. So if you can see the mixture here, it's not super, super wet, um, but it is going to hold together if I, um, you know, press it together. I need to mix it a little bit more. And to be honest, I probably could do with just a little tiny bit more. Okay. So mix all that together. And actually, if you touch the mixture, it actually gets warm in your hands. That's an exothermic reaction happening with the ingredients. Pretty cool, hey? So listen, 
I'm just mix all that together as much as I can. Then I get my ice cube tray and about a teaspoon in each cube to start me off. Some might be a little bit bigger than others, okay? I'm not, this is not an exact measurement what I'm doing here. But I just scoop that into the tray. Now, one thing I didn't add, which um, I usually do, is essential oils. So you can actually add the essential oils to that mix, or you can put one drop in every dishwashing tablet as well, just to make sure it gets in there. Some of them I might need to top up, some might overflow. Now you don't want to make them too big because they've got to fit in the compartment. Just the normal size of what a dishwashing tablet would be. So what I do is I just compress all that in there. Top up the ones that are a little bit too small. My daughter just popped in. She wants to be in all the videos. And basically I let that set. Now what will happen? Is basically they will turn into these. So this is one I made earlier. Now this is one I made with the silicon emulsion and this is one that I made with uh, just water just so you can see the difference. All right so they came out look at that pretty hard right didn't crack. Now let's try these ones. Okay pretty hard too they can get a little bit more crumbly. So look at that, I've got all these dishwashing tablets really nice and easy uh, done, okay? So what I do is store them in an air airtight container and then just use them as you would any other dishwashing tablet, okay? So that is how simple it is. But I wanna show you the power of these little dishwashing tablets. Let me do a little experiment for you. Okay, I'm just going to pop some water in there, just so that's something to wet my dishwashing tablet with. And, ta da da da! Check out this. Now, this is long gone, right? This has been gone for a long time. So, let's see um, if it was a bit more recent, it might be a bit easier, but let's see how we go. Now, this is super abrasive, we need to just get it wet a little bit. take a bit of elbow grease and that this is going to take a little bit of scrubbing okay but if I have really hot water now I've just got some cold water there and I'm just keep dabbing it in you can see the grease coming off there and that if I worked at that I would eventually get this pot a lot better than what state it is right now all right so like I said, I want to keep things honest and real. It's not about performing miracles, okay? But you can clearly see that it's degreasing here. My finger got jammed, a little carpet tunnel. Now I've only been doing that for a little bit, okay? You can see that the water's gone all brown. I've clearly done some removing on the pot, okay? But I find it hard to hold these little tablets. So the beauty of DIY is that I made these big mamas. The exact same thing, but I did it in a soap mould. I'm just going to wet this under the sink. Um, 10 15 minutes just to show you um, that it is actually working okay now remember this is a hell of an old pot so this is doing some magic
Now the next thing I wanted to show you means you have to come over to the... Okay, so here I am, back for part two to map my oven with my ginormous oversized dishwashing tablet and the world's smallest pot of water. Now I would have recommended using hot water, I've got coal here, but nonetheless, look what's this. The good old oven. Now, you can clearly see that I've done some degreasing and window cleaning. Well, let me just get a little rag here. I've got a wet rag. And that took me no time at all. Okay, you can work on those little bits I missed, but Overall, look at that in like less than 30 seconds with the DIY oversized ginormous big fat dishwashing tablet. Right, now for the grand finale of this little dishwashing adventure we've been on. We've seen how quick and easy it was to make. You saw a couple of ways you could use it uh, outside the dishwasher, but let's actually talk about the chemistry behind it. And we've got a huge manufacturer of dishwashing tablets um, called Powerball. And um, I got really excited to do a live video today because what I did was pull out some of my old uh, research documents um, that actually inspired me to start under your sink. And in this particular document, it takes you through what are the functions of a, um, a dishwasher, how it actually works, and um, what challenges I guess that dishwashing companies, dishwasher tablet making companies like Finnish Power will have to face um, and what ingredients they use to, to get around that. Now that got me thinking, um, I'm not a large manufacturer, I only need to look after me. So that is, it's a little bit easier. Now what I wanted to take you through was actually firstly how a dishwasher functions, okay? Now um, Basically what happens is you've got water that will fill up at the bottom of um, a tank and then pumps will pump that through the arms and spray that all on the water. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? But what happens is that water first um, passes through a water softener or an iron exchanger because hard water is damaging for your dishwasher, it's damaging to our stuff, our dishes and it leaves um, scale and deposits on them. and um, we really need soft water for our surfactants to be effective. So it's inbuilt in the dishwashers to try and soften the waters with these ionizers, or iron, sorry, exchanges. Now, if your dishwasher is really old or not functioning, that's probably one of the things that the um, dishwasher repairman will replace. Hmm, very, very interesting. Now there is a cycle that the dishwasher goes through as well. For the, so for the first, say, five minutes or so, it's rinsing. Okay, so um, most dishwasher companies will say to remove any, you know, dirt, um, not dirt, they call it soil, um, but to remove any large food particles and stuff like that. But there is real, no other real we'll need to rinse it with the water, okay, because that's going to happen in the first step of the dishwasher cycle. Now that goes for about five minutes or so and the water is generally cold as it starts to heat up in the actual dishwasher. And then what happens is in the next cycle, you'll hear probably a little clank because that's when your dishwasher tablet door will automatically open and pop out. And that's when those ingredients will start to need to kick in and that needs the heat. And then it will get hotter and then it will actually go through a rinse cycle where the water is drained and all new clean water is put in there with whatever you've got in your rinse aid compartment. Okay, so that's why it's very important to use rinse aid solution, AKA vinegar, okay? So that's, R roughly how the dishwasher, um, you know, how the dishwasher machine works. 
So what else we need um, for the dishwasher is the actual tablets or your, your chemical that's going to go in there. Now, in this little document it says, what does a dishwasher cleaning agent contain? Now, these are the following. They, they, well, firstly it says they um, contain a surprising mix of chemicals. Far more than just a detergent you might expect, okay? So what they need are surfactants, and these promote the mixing between oils and fat-based water. So I've got a little video on my website on what a surfactant is, and I've done videos on that before, so I'm not going to go into it, but it is the soap, okay? The only natural option we've got is using soap, a pure natural soap, and that's why I use the coconut soap. Now, the coconut soap is low in suds, okay? You can't put dishwashing, um, your dishwashing detergent into the dishwasher, you'll get bubbles everywhere because we need low sud surfactants in there. And that's where the coconut soap is absolutely brilliant for these DIY solutions. Next, according to Finish, they need alkalis because these emulsify grease and adjust the pH of water to the optimum for other components to work. Now, if you read this document, it will say that the pH level needs to be around 10, okay? And that's exactly what washing soda would do. And it's a wonderful degreaser, and it's absolutely a huge component in every single dishwashing tablet you'll probably ever find, okay? So that's definitely why it's in mine. Now, bleaches. These oxidize colored substances to colorless ones. Oh. Now, there's two types of bleaches. There's chlorine or there is an oxy bleach, which is the bicarbonate or the crystal clear that I used when I made the um, dishwashing tablets. And this is a safe and natural alternative to chlorine. Gosh, we do not want chlorine as well on our dishwashing tablets. Well, that's probably in the town water. Next, they put in their bio substances. These are enzymes that break down starch and protein-based soils. Pretty cool stuff, actually. They're talking about things like amylase and protease. I'll probably say them wrong, or protease. Now, these are actual um, compounds that replicate what happens inside your stomach, right? So when you eat things like potatoes or meat, there's proteins or carbohydrates. And these enzymes break down proteins or carbohydrates. So that's why they're in there, to break down the food molecules. Now it's getting pretty technical and fancy for our DIY solutions. However, I did experiment with using digestive tablets which do contain amylase and protease and I don't think it really made any difference to my tablets, so it's something I omitted. Um, you've got to remember these dishwashing um, companies like Powerball and Finish, they face some challenges, okay? And, um, sorry, I should go on with what, I'll finish this and then I'll talk about the challenges. The other things that they put in there is builders. These help to soften water and trap metal ions. Now, three wonderful ingredients, natural ingredients that soften water, washing soda, bicarb and borax. Okay, so you could also add a mixture of those if you want to, or if you've got really hard water, you probably need a bit more of that kind of stuff in there and a little less soap, okay? Now, they say here, auxiliaries. These include substances used to make and disintegrate the tablet, as well as colours and perfumes. Now, that's shit we don't need for our DIY, okay? We don't need colours, we don't need perfumes, we don't need microplastics um, to layer up uh, inbuilt fabrics, oh, sorry, dishwashing, rinse aid with the tablet, and that's what Powerball have come up with, with their quantum, because most people forget to put the rinse aid in. So, but these chemicals can't react together, okay? So there's um, microplastics and different chemicals to help them not react until they need to react. Pretty cool stuff, to be honest. But <clears throat> it's a lot of work to go into and you can just make what I made and just put some vinegar in your rinse cycle. Because vinegar is the acid which neutralizes the soap scum um, that can be left over and it reduces the scaling from hard water deposits. And it's a fantastic way to keep your dishwasher clean as well. So, um, you know, there are simpler solutions than going all nuts. Because um, this is one of the, as I was saying about the complications that, you know, these large companies face, okay? Firstly, they've got to build dishwashing tablets that can cater for all types of water. Hard water, soft water, 
um, they came for different types of dishwashing machines, you know, the $10,000 industrial version to the $200 70 year old version like I've got, which is busted, which why well, I can't show you how um, I actually use the dishwasher. Um, it, they also have to um, take into consideration all the different materials that go into a dishwasher, okay? There's aluminium, there's um, porcelain, there's glass, and not everyone follows instructions according to the manufacturer. Not everything is dishwasher safe. Your product needs to say it's dishwasher safe for it to be dishwasher safe. If it doesn't say it's dishwasher safe and you pop it in the dishwasher, there is a likely chance that your um, glassware or your plastic can etch over time. Okay, um, hard water stains as well as the um, soap scum will penetrate those crappy <laughs> non-dishwasher proof items and you just need to wash them by hand. Okay, I shouldn't say crappy because they're not, nine times out of ten they're not crappy. It might be something like your fine china. Now that compared to your saucepan, like they do need some different love and attention. So, um, you know, the companies have to cater for all of this. But you don't have to worry about that with your own DIY solution, okay? If you've got really, really hard water, um, what you can do is tweak this recipe by using more washing soda and less of the soap. It's quite simple as trying alternatives like that. If, um, which... I'm going to jump to some viewer questions in a moment, which talks about cloudiness, so I won't jump into that just yet, all right? But back to how Powerball do this, all right? So they have all of those things that I mentioned, surfactants, alkalis, bleachers, biosubstances, builders, and auxiliaries. Now, in our dishwashing tablet, we have to have the surfactants. It's a function of cleaning that's a necessity. So we've got that in there with our soap. Alkalis, we've got that in there with our washing soda. Bleachers, we've got that in there with the bicarbonate um, and bio substances, we don't have those. Um, but like I said, you can add some um, digestive tablets if you want to give that a go. Um, builders, so if you have really hard water, you can add some bicarb or borax to that mix. And look, if you want fragrance, add some essential oils. It's quite simple there, okay? Now, if you go to the back of this um, document that you know Finish have provided for us. There's a whole bunch of science questions. And um, at the end it will say that sodium carbonate, which is washing soda, is used in dishwashing products to make the solution alkaline. Um, pH of the washing water should be around 10. Bleachers are used to oxidize colored substances to colorless ones. The bleach used is sodium percarbonate. So they're two of the main ingredients. The only thing that I'm not using is their artificial surfactants, okay? Because those are the things that I'm trying to avoid by doing this whole DIY process in the first place, okay? So, um, like I said, the explanation of surfactants and hard water, I've popped all that up on my website so you can have a, a, a pre-read because um, they are topics that I could do a whole nother video on, to be honest. So I hope I haven't bored you too much with the science, but as you can see, Powerball have some structure around what they do, and what they're really trying to do is soften the water, okay? And they want uh, alkaline for degreasing and cleaning, and they need a surfactant in there as well. In terms of the rinse cycle, you absolutely need to have something acidic in there, like vinegar or a citric acid mix. Worst case scenario, buy the damn bloody rinse aid from the shop, but I think it's really important. When you, every process of cleaning has two things, okay? You wash and then you rinse. You brush your teeth, you spit it out, you rinse. You wash your hair, the shampoo, there's conditioner. Um, every cycle has the wash and rinse, your washing machine, your dishwasher. So rinsing has to be an important function, otherwise it wouldn't be in all of this technology to, that we actually use to clean. So don't forget that little step of putting some uh, vinegar directly in the rinse aid compartment and um, it will be effective at um, reducing the cloudiness as well of, um, and giving your glasses that bit more of a sparkle. So one of the viewer questions is, I made your dishwashing tablets a little bit ago and found that it made some of my clear plastic turn cloudy. Now, 
this is not unfortunately just a problem with my dishwashing tablets it's with all of them okay because um according again to um you know finish this is um if glasses get cloudy it may happen over time but it's sped up with hard water okay so hard water is definitely something that can affect glasses and we need to do things to reduce the hard water so it could mean that your machine needs a clean um, and what you could do there is pop a glass of vinegar in the or citric uh, you know a couple of teaspoons of citric acid in a bowl in the top side um, top part of your dishwasher and put it through a hot cycle and um, that should help reduce some of the um, lime scale buildup that might be throughout the machine and you know might give you a bit better result and make sure that that rinse aid compartment is definitely topped up well now um, the finish give us a little tip here <clears throat> to check if your cloud your glass cloudiness is caused by hard, caused by hard or soft water try the vinegar test so they say put a bit of vinegar on a towel and rub your glass that's cloudy if it clears up straight away it does mean that it is the hard water which means you need to give your machine a good clean and maybe in your powders uh, or your tablets take out a bit of soap and add a bit more of the washing soda or add some bicarb or powder or something um borax or something like that but then um if it is still cloudy then unfortunately it's the actual glassware that's been etched over time so there's nothing really you can do about that it's just damaged the actual glass or the plastic and those things happen so that happens to the best of us with the best products okay so don't um please think because it's happened to you that it is just a result of diy uh, what it does mean though with our diy solutions okay we don't have all those extra fancy builders and stuff in there so we do need to maintain our machine um, a lot more and regularly okay so once or twice a week do the the citric and acid vinegar cycle through it now if you go to any of those manufacturers like Bosch or any of those Fisher and Pike or any of their websites, they give you some tips on maintaining the washing machine, um, the dishwasher, and they talk about taking out the filter and cleaning that once or twice a week. They talk about putting um, an acidic cycle through it to, to clean out all the lime scale, and their actual lime scale detergents are made from citric acid so just go for the citric acid and use those principles of alkaline to clean and acid to rinse so um, hate to say it but give the dishwasher the dishwasher a good clean and a good uh, clean out take out some of the soap and, um, in the recipe and add a bit more washing soda and hopefully that might help you with cloudiness on any of your glassware or plastics now the next one is do they clean saucepans now they do so long as it's uh, marked dishwasher safe okay just like any it is highly alkaline powders in there so they don't like those aluminium pots um, so an aluminium pot would not normally say dishwasher safe so uh, stainless steel all this, that stuff if it says dishwasher safe pop it in the dishwasher the ingredients that are in my DIY solution are, are three of what you know Powerball put in there 33 so um, I can't really be damaging in that sense, okay? Uh, which is the next question. Uh, does it damage the dishwasher at all? Um, well, like I said, the ingredients are the same as what's in a powerful dishwashing, just a lot less of them. And um, according to manufacturers, one of the key killers of dishwasher, uh, dish, your dishwasher is actually hard water and live scale buildup. So just like a kettle, you need you can um, descale and clean out your washing machines. We need to do that regularly and clean out the filters, and that should prevent any damage. But the ingredients that you're using in itself, by all means, should not be damaging to anything, um, other than you know things that are not dishwasher safe like aluminium, and you know you might be talking about some fine china with fine markings on it which i think are probably safer to wash by hand um any hints on what you would clean the dishwasher with was the final question so i hope i've answered that i think it, it's uh, really simple just put it an empty cycle and just put some vinegar in a bowl or citric acid in a bowl on the top of the rack of the dishwasher put on a cycle 
chuck some essential oils in there just for that extra freshness as well and antibacterial qualities and voila that's all you need so um i'll pop all these videos together and um, I'm really sorry that it didn't quite turn out like a live. It would have been so much more exciting with all the interaction and everything. But nonetheless, hope you've learned something. Please leave a comment if you've got any questions. Um, all of this stuff is available on my website. Um, even all the ingredients and products are, should you need them. Um, I'll be online for a bit if you've got any questions. And thank you.